Hello, my name is Ivan Sharmok. In this session, I'm going to talk about enterprise security controls for Kubernetes, leveraging native Kubernetes capabilities as well as capabilities offered in uh, Calico. To set the stage, I'll briefly go to describe what Calico is. Project Calico is a simple, secure, and scalable networking solution for Kubernetes. The uh, Calico design that leverages native Linux data plane allows it to be very performant. The uh, a layer three network uh, uh, setup is allowed to be without encapsulation as well as using IP and IP or VXLAN encapsulation if, if that's uh, your preferred choice. The uh, leveraging uh, BGP protocol to configure the networking allows Calico to scale to the limits of Kubernetes and its uh, network security enforcement solution uh, has been recognized and widely adopted in Kubernetes community. The uh, uh, public cloud providers like AWS, Google, Azure, IBM, uh, all have adopted uh, Calico to be their standard uh, network policy enforcement solution. Also embedded into Docker Enterprise and Rancher and integrated into the uh, Red Hat's uh, OpenShift platform. We are working closely with our customers uh, to, uh, to make sure that uh, Calico provides, uh, provides the solution that suits their needs. It's been uh, hardened in production environments uh, leveraged by large enterprises and the largest SaaS companies. We know of uh, hund over 150,000 clusters where Calico is used on a daily basis. There are several channels that are used to communicate with um, Calico and the Calico community. We, uh, we have close to 5,000 people in the uh, Calico users Slack channel. We have over 150 active uh, contributors to the project. Um, here's an example of a few of our customers that use Calico. Uh, you can see that uh, there are companies in fintech sector, uh, as well as the manufacturing uh, sector. Uh, the uh, in addition to Calico open source, uh, the Calico enterprise solution was developed uh, to, uh, to provide the uh, uh, capabilities for day two operations, uh, provide some adv advanced configuration for networking like dual tour configuration for, for example, as well as provide additional tools uh, for network security. Here's an example of uh, the span that uh, Calico reached uh, were on the left-hand side, you can see the public cloud provider, uh, their managed Kubernetes offerings. That's uh, uh, also used in the uh, uh, package solutions uh, like uh, Docker Enterprise, developed by Mirantis, uh, OpenShift, Rancher, Canonical, VMware, Tanzu, D2, IQ, and all the way to the, uh, to the right, VMs and bare metals. Uh, basically, on-prem, you can you can also install uh, Calico. In uh, this talk, I'm going to go over these topics, uh, briefly cover Kubernetes RBAC uh, without doing any deep dive, and then compare network policies, Kubernetes network policies to Calico network policies, uh, briefly touch on default deny uh, policy implementation, and then talk about the uh, security controls that Calico offers um, with uh, a few example slides for global alerts and compliance reports. And uh, also briefly uh, mention the uh, intrusion detection threat defense capabilities uh, that Calico Enterprise provides. So starting with Kubernetes RBAC, uh, Kubernetes RBAC is uh, it's a role-based uh, access control. Uh, it leverages Three, uh, three categories, subjects, operations, and resources, where in subjects, um, it can be a user group or service account of which only service account is managed by Kubernetes, is stored and managed in Kubernetes. User and group 
uh, objects are stored outside of Kubernetes and uh, represented by a string ID uh, to reference them. Uh, the operations such as list, get, create, update, and so forth uh, are used against the resources such as pods, nodes, config maps, secrets, and, and others. So uh, which allows to configure the roles and what uh, the permissions that those roles give to the resources. Uh, jump into the Kubernetes network policy. Uh, the uh, uh, network policies were designed to allow admins, operators, and developers of uh, Kubernetes platform to define network rules uh, and deploy them using uh, using the same tools uh, into the Kubernetes platform. Uh, the uh, support uh, native net, uh, network policy Kubernetes API enforced by CNI in many cases, uh, Calico is used for that. Uh, uh, policies, Kubernetes network policies are namespaced uh, resources, uh, meaning that each policy uh, applies to a specific namespace to the uh, network flows within specific namespace where it's deployed to. They lever leverage selectors and labels to target the network flows and uh, uh, use rules uh, to specify to and from traffic in namespaces, pods, uh, IPs, or subnets defined by CIDR notation. Uh, you can manage them uh, leveraging the uh, kubectl uh, command line tool. Uh, the uh, Kubernetes network uh, policies can, can be used with any CNI that provides policy enforcement. Uh, policy can uh, specify protocols to, like TCP IP and different port ranges. You can define ingress, egress rules. If there is no policy defined, all the flows are allowed. So pods uh, can talk to, uh, to all other pods. And um, once you deploy a policy that uh, defines rules and um, defines rules for to allow specific flows, everything else automatically gets switched to, to the default deny. So it's kind of like an implicit default, uh, default deny gets implemented once a policy is deployed into the namespace. So briefly go over what Calico offers uh, in addition to standard Kubernetes policies. Calico ex extends uh, them with additional capabilities uh, like providing policy ordering where you can uh, uh, set the priority for the policy. Uh, the integration with Istio Envoy proxy allows Calico to uh, to use rules for L5, L7 um, layers. Uh, also, uh, Calico network policies can target the host interfaces. Uh, basically, uh, you can you can protect the host-based uh, services. Uh, not only the pods, but also extend that to the uh, host-based services and even VMs outside of Kubernetes cluster. Um, you can connect those VMs to the uh, uh, control plane and uh, use the policies defined in your Kubernetes cluster to program the data plane on those VMs. Uh, Calico network policies support um, both namespaced policies as well as the global policies, which uh, the global policy can apply to the entire cluster without uh, being restricted to any specific namespace uh, and allow additional actions like allow, deny, log, and pass. In this case, pass is uh, most commonly used uh, in uh, Calico Enterprise where there is um, there are such objects as tiers. And uh, within the policies, you can uh, you can leverage uh, such objects as endpoint, uh, namespace, and service account uh, within the selectors. Uh, to manage Calico policies, you can use a tool called Calico CTL, um, which is a requirement when you're using Calico open source. When you're using Calico Enterprise, you can use either kubectl or Calico CTL. And uh, Calico Enterprise provides some additional features to the policies like the DNS uh, policies. 
uh, uh, you can uh, leverage the policy tiers uh, where you can group the policies into the tiers and allow different teams in your organization manage those tiers. Therefore, setting setting up the guardrails for uh, for the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, there is a policy preview feature which allows you to see the effect of a change in a network policy before you uh, deploy that policy, and you can stage a policy. Uh, after you preview that, you can, um, if you are still not certain uh, whether that policy may may have a negative uh, effect. You can stage the policy, therefore deploying that in a permissive mode, which would allow you to see uh, how that pr policy would affect the traffic if it were, uh, were to be enforced. Uh, and uh, a stage network policy shows, uh, shows the impact in the visualization tools, but it does not affect the real traffic. Once you're comfortable with the policy, you can go ahead and enforce it. Uh, one concept, concept that I want to touch in here is the uh, default deny policy, uh, which is commonly used when um, uh, when people try to implement the zero trust networking, the approach to zero trust networking in Kubernetes cluster. It's a kind of catch everything else policy. Um, and uh, instead of relying on implicit um, default deny that Kubernetes turns on once there is a policy deployed, you can proactively deploy an explicit default deny policy into each namespace when you're using uh, standard Kubernetes policies, or you can target everything with a, just a single global network policy, uh, Calico uh, global network policy. Uh, when using Calico Enterprise, that's important to know that uh, you should uh, deploy the uh, default deny a policy into the lower tier to make sure that you would not uh, unintentionally block traffic that was intended for lower tiers. So it should be defined as the last policy in uh, in the lowest, uh, lowest tier, which is default tier. So out of the uh, uh, Calico security controls, uh, uh, out of the security controls that Calico offers, the network policy, global network policies, um, network sets and global network sets, those are available in both Calico Open Source and Calico Enterprise. Whereas everything else listed in here, like tiers, global threats, global alerts, compliance reports, and threat, uh, threat defense uh, mechanisms, those are attributes of Calico Enterprise. Uh, in uh, threat defense, uh, in uh, threat feeds, uh, allow uh, threat feeds allow you to uh, consume a list of uh, IPs or uh, IP networks or the uh, uh, domain names that uh, your security team does wants to restrict access to. And thread feed would consume the list and convert that into a global network set and automatically update it once there is a change to that list. Therefore, automating the process of uh, maintaining the global network set. Uh, global uh, alerts rely on the alerting framework that Calico Enterprise provides to create notifications to trigger uh, any alerts uh, of um, any suspicious activity. Uh, with the compliance reports, compliance uh, compliance teams can can rely on uh, generating the uh, the report to prove the compliance for uh, for the cluster for any specific namespace or any specific workloads. And uh, threat defense and intrusion, uh, intrusion and anomaly detection capabilities. I'll uh, briefly mention them in uh, uh, further slides. So the uh, here's an example of an alert that is uh, generated by Calico. Uh, Calico um, alert framework relies on flow logs, audit logs, and DNS logs, and you can create the rules to target any information within those logs. Uh, in this example, a global network set was changed and uh, the alert was triggered. Here's an example of a compliance report, uh, visualization of a report. Uh, they can be configured uh, using, <clears throat> uh, with, a, with a schedule, how often you want to run those. And uh, you can report on policy coverage within cluster or any namespace 
a number of endpoints uh, also within a cluster, any namespace, or you can customize the reports to track any available metric. Uh, so in terms of uh, intrusion uh, detection and anomaly detection, uh, Calico provides capabilities such as uh, blocking any known actors, bad actors, the threat feed, um, previously discussed threat feed example that uh, can be leveraged in this case, uh, identifying a malicious activity, anomaly, any uh, anomalous behavior uh, within the cluster, uh, like uh, IP sweeps, IP scans, or uh, a spike in packets coming in or coming out, uh, that all can be detected by the uh, uh, anomaly detection. Uh, jobs. Uh, you can build a mode around the critical workloads, uh, which would be very specific and like t tighten the network around uh, uh, sensitive uh, pods. Uh, you can leverage honey pods, which uh, allow you to, to mock or set up a process that looks like a real process, or, uh, let's say MySQL. Um, and uh, as soon as any traffic hits that, uh, that process, uh, you would trigger some um, response to that, like uh, start capturing the packets and uh, alert the security team to investigate the source of that traffic and why it's hitting your uh, honeypot. Uh, leveraging all the tools, you can, uh, you can uh, create the automated mitigation of any attack uh, carried against your cluster. And uh, to show you some of these examples, I won't have time to cover everything, but I will cover uh, at least a few examples. So in my cluster, uh, I have Calico installed, Calico Enterprise. You can see this Tigera uh, hyphen namespaces. Uh, all, the, uh, uh, all of those are part of Calico Enterprise. So I'm going to deploy a few applications and go if, through a few demo scenarios uh, to show how, um, how Calico uh, can help. Uh, so I have uh, uh, within NS1 namespace, I have one application within NS2 second application, both applications, they are, they are similar in a way. Uh, there is uh, CentOS uh, utility pod deployed in NS1 and NetShoot utility pod deployed uh, in NS2. And then there is a uh, Nginx deployment with two replicas in there. So what I'm going to do, uh, I talked about uh, deny all, deny all. What uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, test the access first to uh, to my Nginx pods within both namespaces, and then I'm going to deploy. Uh, deny all policy, which deploys in, into the uh, uh, NS1 namespace. All, all of these um, YAML files uh, and examples are available online. I'll, I'll mention at the end of this talk uh, where to find them. So I'm not gonna uh, go through each of them right now. So once I deployed this now in NS1, I should not be able to access my Nginx service. Uh, because there is uh, an explicit deny all policy and I don't have any other policy deployed that uh, allows the access to, to my Nginx. So first thing, uh, what I'm going to do in here, so you can see the first uh, call failed, which was going to an S1 namespace and second succeeded because my policy is deployed only in, it's a Kubernetes policy, which is deployed only in an S1. So second thing uh, that I'm going to do is to allow um, my pods to access kubeDNS, uh, a kubeDNS resource uh, in my cluster. So once I've done that, I can deploy uh, ingress, egress policies for my Nginx in NS1 namespace. And now I should be able to access it. Okay, so now I, you can see I can access both of those uh, deployments. So next I'm going to implement the global network policy, the Calico network policy deny all. So now 
I, you can see I still have access to my NS1 because I already have policies in place, but for NS2, I'm getting uh, my request timed out because uh, I do not have ingress policies defined. So let me do that. And now uh, both of my Nginx deployments are accessible again. So the next thing that I wanted to, uh, want to show is how um, the uh, Calico tiers and how to work with the uh, Calico tiers and Calico Enterprise. The default tier that you can see right here in the policy board, um, uh, that's the, uh, the only tier in Calico open source. That's how all the policies are stacked in just in one tier. In Calico Enterprise, you have the ability to create multiple tiers. So let's deploy a new tier in here and you, uh, you would see in a moment Okay, here's my uh, my tier. So in my new tier, uh, let's move uh, the allow kubeDNS policy from the default tier because I want to make sure that all of my um, all of my pods within the cluster uh, will be able to talk to the kubeDNS. Uh, uh, so what I'm going to do is to remove. kubeDNS from default and move it to the uh, uh, security tier. So you can see my allow kubeDNS showed up in here. So and if I do the testing again, you can see everything's still working. So before I move further, I would like to deploy a few um, global alerts to show you an example of a global alert getting triggered and uh, show you uh, the uh, network sets and deploy a few network sets into my cluster. Okay. So now I have an example. Um, I deployed a network set and a policy that leverages that network set. So in this example now from my center pod, I'm trying to access um, my, uh, trying to ping a public IP of Apple, uh, apple.com and also curl uh, Google. You can see in both of these examples, uh, the uh, uh, the access has failed. Now uh, I can deploy a, a DNS a DNS policy to allow the access to Google. And now from my center spot, uh, I should be able to access Google. I'm getting 200 uh, response, but access to apple.com should still be blocked because, uh, because I do not, um, uh, in my network set that I uh, defined uh, for the policy, for, for the DNS policy to be implemented, uh, I did not allow uh, Apple to be accessed, only Google uh, domain uh, can be accessed. Okay, let's switch to, to the UI. So in here you can see several policies got added uh, in both, both tiers. And if I switch to alerts, uh, I need to modify a network policy in order to get an alert triggered. So if I do something like this, and give it a second, uh, it will trigger uh, an alert. Uh, here's an example of uh, the uh, uh, compliance reports. So I have a, a report uh, that is triggered every hour for the inventory. 
and I'm getting the uh, how many endpoints uh, and how many uh, uh, ingress, egress uh, endpoints I cover it in the, um, uh, uh, the namespaces. The uh, alerting mechanism de depends on the um, uh, flow logs. So I uh, probably will uh, see this in another 30 seconds or so. Uh, while I'm going to just uh, continue on the presentation and then return back to, to the alerting. So the, uh, some takeaways from, from this talk, the uh, uh, policies can be, uh, uh, can be defined in a declar declarative manner and deployed uh, alongside your uh, application artifacts into Kubernetes. Calico network policy provides a sophisticated superset of Kubernetes network policies that provide additional feature to solve real world use cases. Uh, Calico has been tested and proven in a large scale production deployments and um, is quite simple and easy to install and operate. Uh, provides a rich set of security controls, uh, which you can use to fine grain and coarse grain access to pods and ex external services. Uh, the alerting framework that uh, can be used to uh, set up notifications on uh, unsanctions, any unsanctioned activity. Uh, the uh, compliance reports can be used by compliance teams to prove uh, compliance uh, of uh, entire cluster or specific uh, workload, specific namespaces, and intrusion detection can be used by security teams to uh, configure proactive rules to detect and act on malicious activity. Uh, a few uh, words on where you can find more information, you can go head to docs.projectcalico.org. Uh, there is quite, quite a bit of info in there uh, and examples how, how you can use Calico. And all the examples that I've shown uh, in, in this talk and uh, even more you can find in uh, GitHub repo in the Tegera-Solutions account um, uh, under the uh, Calico security controls for KDS uh, repository. And if you would like to try Calico Enterprise, we, uh, we are providing hosted trials where the cluster is set up for you Everything is configured. If you are new to Calico, there are guided labs that are provided and you can just step through each lab. Uh, if you feel comfortable in, uh, with uh, using Calico and want to test uh, your specific use cases, you can just use the clusters to, uh, to make sure that uh, you can address the use cases you have. Uh, let me quickly check if the uh, alert showed up in here. Yes, so I got my two alerts. One is for Apple domain. So I accessed Apple several times and uh, where it was not permitted. You can see here four times. And here's my alert on changing the global network set. A few times the network set was, uh, global network set was changed. Uh, this concludes uh, this talk. Thank you for listening and hope you got something useful out of it.